Joining me right now is Joshua Bongard. He is one of the lead researchers uh, working on this technology at the University of Vermont. This is out of this world. Joshua, congrats on what you're doing, but I've got a lot of questions. Um, tell us exactly, you know, these Xenobots, what are they, how do they work, and what do you hope they'll do? Sure, Frederica, I'm happy to do so. Thanks for having <laughs> me on the show. Yeah. So these uh, Xenobots start their life by being created in a supercomputer. Okay. So unlike some other uh, robots that are out there that are being created out of DNA and other living tissues, mm -hmm. our Xenobots are designed by a supercomputer. We tell the computer what we would like the Xenobot to do, mm. and the su supercomputer then goes to work for a week uh, designing these devices and at the end of that week it gives us back the best design that it came up with huh. and our colleagues at Tufts University then build these uh, small xenobots cell by cell we put them in a petri dish and lo and behold the xenobot moves along the bottom of the petri dish in the way that the computer predicted wow and so these cells derive from frogs that's right. Uh, the nickname for these little guys is Xenobots from Xenopus lavis, which is a African clawed frog. Um, so mm. basically they're bundles of frog skin cells and mm. frog muscle cells. So oh the muscle gosh. cells are like little pistons and allow these little creatures to move. Oh my gosh. So then you mentioned these, you know, that, that eventually, um, or at least your hope is, that humans would be able to use these xenobots in some way? Is it to ingest medicine, you know, orally? Is it to implant into the body somehow? How does it work? Yeah, so at the moment in this first study, we just wanted to demonstrate that this new technology is possible. And we're hoping to then work with our medical colleagues to figure out medical applications. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, one likely scenario might be eventually that instead of building these uh, biobots out of frog cells, mm -hmm. we would make them out of human cells and actually mm -hmm. out of the cells of the human patient themselves. They might eventually swallow the xenobots in pill form, oh, wow. and the xenobots, in that case, might be able to uh, find a cancerous tumor and deliver drugs or scrape plaque from the inside of an artery. Mm. And by me being made out of the cells of the human patient themselves, we can sort of bypass all the immune response challenges brought about by other kinds of delivery technologies. Wow, multifunctional. So uh, how does artificial intelligence play a role here? Is that where the computer comes in? or? That's right. So it turns out that for a human, it's extremely difficult to design one of these xenobots to figure out how to put together the various kinds of frog cells to make a xenobot that does what we want it to do. So the AI has to spend a lot of time uh, performing a trial and error process where it's looking for a design that will give us the function that we want. That's how the AI comes into this. Wow. Uh, fascinating stuff. How excited about this are you? Uh, we couldn't be more excited. Um, <laughs> we were pretty surprised that this was possible. It's been a great collaboration with Tufts. We're looking to team up with, uh, with other groups and see how far we can push this technology. All right. Well, you know, I can't help myself. I think of that image from the Matrix, you know, and the thing that goes in the, <laughs> in the belly button. Not an insult, but, you know, it, it, it's a huge departure from that, right? <laughs> I, I, we hope so. Obviously, okay. there's a Just lot checking. of public concern about this technology, <laughs> and uh, we're definitely working with our regulatory colleagues to make sure that this technology is, is used well. Oh, amazing. Brilliant minds for you to put all this together. Congratulations to you, Joshua Bongard. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.